All right, guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I don't know if any of you guys saw this. Uh, this coming from XRP Stewie here. Coinbase won't let you buy any cryptocurrency. He's uh, fooling around here with Coinbase, and it's looking as though he's not uh, even able to put any uh, type of payment in the system here. It says payments unavailable. Please try again later. Are we witnessing another glitch? I mean, uh, the market did take a bit of a turn. Not so much that I would assume that uh, people would be panic selling. Uh, we've got Bitcoin up here down just a little bit today. So, um, I mean, I'm really wondering why uh, Coinbase is having problems. Usually they can handle this type of activity. 27,500 for Bitcoin. Let me bring up XRP real quickly here. We've got XRP down a little bit. And uh, unfortunately now XRP is back under that 50 cent mark, 49.9. Uh, just by a little bit. But guys, we were talking about this. The fact that we could see a bit more of a decline before reaching new all-time highs. And of course, we're going to see the Bitcoin halving, which is happening April 2024. Bitcoin halving in just 200 days, says Mags here on Twitter. Ever wondered where Bitcoin was 200 days before in the previous halving cycle? So just, uh, you know, something to be mindful of, guys. In 2016, Bitcoin was minus 65% below its all-time high. In 2019, it was uh, below 60% its all-time high. And in 2023, right now, 200 days before the halving, Bitcoin is currently about 60% below its all-time high. So, you know, we are right now seeing what is par for the course for Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, that's good. We don't want to be surprised by anything uh, too out of the ordinary. So Bitcoin down a little bit from its all-time high. It is also down since its initial rally back at the beginning of 2023. But guys, crypto market, even though uh, fear and greed is still in the neutral category 45, which, uh, you know, is still relatively high for recent memory, we are in fact in the red market cap at 1.07 trillion. We've got 24 hour volume is up a little bit, 37.3. Bitcoin dominance, guys, 50.1%. I don't think we've seen Bitcoin dominance uh, go over 50% in a while. And you guys can see a sea of red for the crypto market. Bitcoin's down 1.05, 1.04%. It's vacillating right now. And, uh, you know, the rest of the crypto space also in the red. I don't think we have... Uh, much in the way of gains over the last 24 hours. And so markets down, guys. Usually altcoins are the first one to get decimated. Uh, here, let me bring up Bitcoin dominance real quickly here. 50% for Bitcoin dominance. So uh, we recently did see that back in July. And now we're making that move back up. So, uh, you know, something that we haven't seen in a while. But guys, again, this is all par for the course. We are about 60% off the all-time highs, which is pretty typical. And uh, I mean, we could in fact go lower. And considering altcoins are also going lower, wanted to remind you guys this morning, you can follow my trading journey at patreon.com slash working money channel. Uh, I did forget to give a shout out the other day to Joshua. So wanted to give a shout out to Joshua. I'm sorry, guys, if I missed your name, I've been getting overwhelmed. I'm working on a few updates for the Patreon channel. And for only $5 a month, you guys can follow my trading journey. I purposely kept it affordable so we can do this together through the halving through 2024 and finally cashing out near the top of the bull cycle. So last week I did do a portfolio roundup for all my patrons and uh, I know I did miss one coin. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to be updating that this week. So uh, you're going to get part two this week. In the meantime, guys, sitting patiently cash on the side, still waiting for this market to really kind of move. Jeremy Hogan came out the other day helping the XRP community uh, with a clarification about, uh, you know, what is happening with the Ripple SEC case. I know we recently got the interlocutory appeal denial by Judge Torres. And so he's saying, I'm seeing some confusion as to what could happen next in Ripple versus the SEC case now that Judge Torres has denied the interlocutory appeal. So I've outlined every possibility and provided the exact chance of each possibility happening and how long each could take. So the overview, the judge issued the summary judgment and denied an early appeal. The SEC has a 100% right to appeal when the whole case is finished, and that will happen when there is final judgment. As you will see, the SEC has no real good options here. So possibility number one, the SEC moves forward with trial next April against the individual defendants. Chances of that 39.456%. The judge has left only the hardest part of the case for trial. The SEC could easily make an L at trial and have some of its dirty laundry aired at the same time, so are they willing to risk that? If the SEC goes to trial, an appeal of the case won't be filed until 2025. That means an appellate court ruling uh, won't come until 2026. Then, and even if the SEC wins on appeal, the case would most likely be remanded back to Judge Torres for further litigation. So, the SEC wants to push the entire case to trial and then appeal the parts of the judgment against Ripple it doesn't like, fair enough. 
but the most likely outcome in that situation is a final resolution in 2027, June 14th, 2027 to be exact. Good luck with that. So that brings us to possibility number two, guys. The SEC could settle the case against the individual defendants and move forward with obtaining a final judgment against Ripple and then appeal. Chances of that, 32.113%. This is the SEC's best option for that reason. I doubt they will do it. Settling out the individual defendants gets the SEC to an appellate court about 9 to 12 months faster and saves its resources and face by bypassing a very difficult and overreaching case. So we got to remember, guys, the SEC, even though they are a government agency, do not have infinite resources and they probably want to save some of their budget to uh, litigate other cases. After settlement, the individuals, uh, after settlement of the individuals, the case would go straight to remedies litigation. Remedies litigation still would require months and months to complete, which was part of the SEC's argument as to why it needed an early appeal. This option would still go deep into 2026, August 14th, 2026 to be exact. And then there's option number three, guys. Option number three, the SEC settles all litigation against Ripple and the individual defendants. Yes, this could happen at a settlement conference, such as the judge required below. But the SEC has shown very little desire to compromise thus far. Settlement is a good option for the SEC at this point in time. So maybe, you know, just maybe they have changed their tune. It gets to publish another win and collect a big, big check from the bad guys. Remember what John Deaton said the other day in terms of, uh, you know, the optics. If the SEC does, in fact, uh, get that win, they can say, hey, look, look at what we collected. A win. Ripple has been fined. Really, though, who's the winner? Ripple. They get to do what they need. But at least the optics for the SEC is positive. Uh, The judge cleared this path for them by clarifying that her ruling only applies to the facts specific to XRP. Chance of that happening, though, 18.987%. And the date for that would be this December 2023. Finally, something else I haven't thought of could happen. Who knows? Chance of this happening, though, 8.675%. As you can see, the SEC has a couple of bad and lengthy options. Meanwhile, the summary judgment is the law of the land, and that can't even possibly change until 2026 at the earliest. So, guys, uh, you know, in the video I did, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, we were talking about, uh, you know, if XRP could switch back to, you know, in question because of the SEC's decisions to appeal. Nope, XRP is going to be free and clear for this bull run. So I wanted to thank Jeremy Hogan for posting that. Mike Manfield here, guys, bringing this to our attention with regards to one of these more recent Ripple Partner news stories. Guys, it has to do with the Hong Kong EHKD. Uh, and they're talking here about how their trials are exploring new interesting use cases for digital currencies and payments. Now, if you guys remember, we did uh, recently get a story a couple of months ago now about the HKD Hong Kong e-dollar, their CBDC, uh, and how they're piloting that on RippleNet. Hong Kong's trials of the digital currency have shown potential uses in payment, deposit, and investment scenarios, but relevant players need more experience before a launch date can be considered. So this uh, you know article just explaining that uh, it is being trialed right now. There's some interesting use cases for the EHKD in all areas like programmable payments and in new areas like tokenizations, deposits, and tokenized assets. Uh, This coming from the CEO of the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Hong Kong in May launched a trial for 16 banks and payment companies to test the digital currency with a select small group of clients. Uh, The first step towards introducing a virtual coin the public will eventually use to shop, dine out, and transfer money. In a programmable payment scenario, rules encrypted in the digital currency restrict the use of money. This could, for example, ring fence a customer's money on deposit with a merchant protecting it in case of a merchant's collapse. So they are uh, framing this in a way to suggest, hey, look, you know, your money is safe if you use a CBDC. I don't know. It's still debatable. I guess it depends on how uh, up and up the government is. I personally love what El Salvador is doing, letting, uh, you know, people use Bitcoin, for example, because at least it's predictable to a degree. Uh, I mean, if you follow cryptocurrency, I feel like Bitcoin is more predictable than any fiat, but I'm sure many, many people would disagree with me uh, who are not in cryptocurrency, obviously. Down here, guys, it says crypto solutions for this particular project, okay? Solutions company Ripple, alongside its partner Fubon Bank, conducted a test using the EHKD to make payments for tokenized real estate and other real world assets. And guys, here is a quote, the ability of the EHKD to make payments can promote the tokenization of real estate and other real world assets. This coming from Brooks Entwistle, Senior Vice President and Managing Director of the Asia Pacific region at Ripple. This is what he told the Post in May. So uh, it's looking as though this project is continuing to forge ahead. Uh, I will keep you guys updated when we do get more information on that. So I wanted to thank Mike Manfield for posting that.
Oh, just one last thing, I guess I will uh, mention down here, Mike does point this out from this article that uh, the 16 banks and payment companies that are involved in the trial are due to report at the end of October. So October 30th to November 5th, that is the uh, reporting period there. Wanted to thank Mike for posting that, guys. We also got this from XRP Healthcare, another update. They are uh, letting everybody know. Uh, they're proud to announce that due to our expansion into Africa and growing interest in Asia, XRPH will be listed on CoinStore tomorrow, October the 10th. At 10 o'clock UTC, making our utility token more accessible to those regions. So if you guys are watching from that region of the world, I got CoinStore up here and uh, it is a trading platform. I will link this in the description of the video. Just thought I would uh, give you guys that information there. If you are interested in this project, many projects being built on the XRP ledger, guys. It's not just payments. Payments is one vertical. And, uh, you know, I feel like there's two camps, right? You know, we're focused on payments, XRP utility going through payments, that liquidity, the quantity, the sheer amount of XRP that's going to be needed for, you know, a lot of these payments at scale. That's one thing, but guys, all XRP utility is going to be important down the road. The more XRP is used, basically, the more demand there will be. Supply and demand fundamentals exist here. And this is real world demand. This is not spec demand. So, you know, the spec run this time around, very, very different, right? When I'm trading with my patrons, I'm looking at particular cryptocurrencies that have the potential to pump really, really hard in a spec run because that is currently what we're in. But real world utility, guys, this is going to happen over time. And this is going to happen uh, with the gradual adoption option of XRP. So over the next decade, this is why, again, I'm going to be holding a portion of my XRP and I'm going to let my patrons know exactly how much that is. Uh, ISO 20022, let's do it, posted this. Okay, Swift, September 2023 presentation. So just from last month, major vendors, DTCC, ISDA, et cetera, which we talked about over the last several months are getting ready for UTI and interoperability of digital assets and tokens. So here is a, uh, a recent Swift report here, guys, facilitating interoperability between platforms across asset classes, including digital and tokenized assets. Now Swift is coming to the realization that they have to be interoperable. If you can't beat them, you kind of are forced to join them, right? Here, just highlighting some of the automated integration channels. So get securities transaction summary details. Uh, so the purpose for that is service user queries for a specific record. The service returns summary and current transaction details. Uh, and some other ones here like get securities transactions and get changed securities transactions. Just outlining uh, the timeline for that. Also over here, guys, major vendors are getting ready for the UTI. So these guys are all jumping on board and, uh, you know, everybody should be integrated by November of this year. And just a bit of a flow chart here showing you guys how that UTI integration is going to happen yesterday versus today. So it is changing very, very quickly, leveraging DLT technology, cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, new technology to facilitate these payments around the world. So payments, definitely a big part of what Ripple is doing. Uh, and as I said before, you know, some are a bit adverse to this uh, idea that Ripple could be doing other things. I don't know why, really. Dark Horse here posting this. The post that's circulating from David Schwartz proves that companies pivot. So, you know, the fact that Ripple is focusing on other verticals, uh, Brad Garlinghouse has said Ripple will focus on other verticals in the future. And uh, I think David Schwartz is just reaffirming this. I think people are worried that, uh, you know, if Ripple starts focusing on something else, they're not going to pay as much attention to the cross-border payments and therefore XRP utility won't be as prevalent. I don't personally think that that's the case at all. Here, David Schwartz uh, talks a little bit about the changing landscape. I'm just going to play you guys this clip real quick. Stable coin. Um, if we had really good stable coins in the major currencies, which we don't have yet, then using the DEX would be more practical. So that's also something that we're hoping will happen. We came very, very close to that. We had a deal that I thought was going to close, and then that was two and a half years ago when the ex when the SEC filed suit against us, and so that kind of torpedoed that deal. So, so we'll see. But we are we're talking we're talking to banks and and uh, larger financial institutions about trying to get them to launch some premium stable coins to make that more practical. Launching so launching more stable coins, you say, David. It's been in the works for a while, and uh, as David said, there that deal did get torpedoed for various reasons. Of course, the SEC lawsuit being the biggest one. Uh, here's a quote from Brad Garlinghouse from back in 2019. As predicted, banks are changing their tune on crypto, but this JPN project misses the point. So uh, kind of criticizing the JPM coin project at that time. I remember this time very, very clearly. The landscape's changing, stable coin adoption on the XRPL, as we've seen, you know, even just with uh, this project here, the EHKD, we're seeing more and more of this type of stuff occur. So, you know, this is uh, what we should expect from Ripple, I think, in the coming years. David Schwartz even did uh, mention this four years ago. What do you think of IBM's partnership with Stellar and their use of stablecoin? So, you know, also looking at what the competition is doing and, uh, you know, to a degree, 
having to keep up with that. Uh, think about NFTs on the XRP ledger, right? That I think is direct competition to what Ethereum is doing with regards to NFTs. Uh, because NFTs are going to be a realistic part of this new uh, framework, whether it has to do with finance or other things, just tokenization, right? The internet of everything. So Ripple doesn't want to be left behind. Of course, part of this story too is the doomed economy and the potential collapse of the US dollar. Guys, I saw this from Mac Attack XRP on Twitter. Forbes is predicting an $8 trillion influx into XRP and Bitcoin markets amid looming US dollar collapse. So this one courtesy of the cryptic basic here and Forbes did recently uh, put out an article. It was reported US dollar collapse shock $8 trillion predicted Fed inflation flip to spark a critical Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP and crypto price boom to rival gold. So uh, they came out with this, I think just yesterday, Ian Bins was also uh, bringing this up, US dollar collapse shock, $8 trillion guys predicted to inflow into this crypto market. So that would bring the market up if we saw another $8 trillion. I mean, right now it's uh, only at 1 trillion. So that would bring us up nine full $9 trillion for the crypto space, making coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP go up 9X. That would bring us to a $4.50 XRP roughly. Did I get that math right? 50 cents times nine? Yeah. Why am I second guessing myself? So $8 trillion influx, guys. Here's what Forbes is saying. Bitcoin, alongside other major cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, XRP, have lost momentum. Uh, they go on to say the Bitcoin price has lost 60%, of course. The rest of the crypto market has lost, even as a BlackRock insider primes the market for a $17.7 .7 trillion earthquake. Now, the Federal Reserve grapples with a $33 trillion death debt spiral. Jeffries, an analyst, has uh, warned that the Fed will be forced to restart its money printer, potentially collapsing the US dollar and fueling a Bitcoin price boom to rival gold. And so, you know, every time, anytime they talk about a Bitcoin price boom, the contagion obviously does uh, catch on with the rest of the crypto market. So, I mean, it's not just Bitcoin that's going to boom. Generally what we see, right, the dominance uh, of Bitcoin does initially go up, but then, you know, the crypto market catches fire and the rest of the coins do their thing too. And that's usually where we see the biggest gains. So Forbes is saying, you know, this could in fact see uh, the shock of $8 trillion vacating the US financial system for the XRP and Bitcoin markets amid a projection U.S. dollar collapse. Chad Steingraber here, professional game designer in the XRP community, spotlighted uh, the report for the XRP army. Here's the tweet from Chad, of course, just highlighting this Forbes article. The other interesting thing I wanted to note here, guys, was this tweet from Fojack here, Mr. Pool, with regards to the U.S. dollar collapse. Now, because we see these tweets from years ago, and, uh, you know, we've been even talking about a U.S. dollar collapse from years ago. I mean, we could see it coming uh, beyond the tree. What's that? What's that saying? Coming through the trees? We could see it. Um, it's not the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm thinking of a different saying. Anyway, the fact that the U.S. dollar is going to be displaced, I mean, it's not a new concept. But, you know, the thing that I find very, very interesting is the fact that Mr. Poole here was talking about this years ago, even posting this exact same photo, guys, from August of 2020, of course, during the beer flu when they were printing money. So it makes sense. It's logical that he would post this. But guys, the coincidence, the fact that he used this exact image and now Forbes is using this exact image for this particular article talking specifically about the US dollar collapse. So an interesting coincidence here, maybe a coincidence, maybe Mr. Poole knows something we don't know. Even, uh, you know, the fact that he posted this back in May of 2022 collapse. I mean, so many signs were pointing to this. And, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, the writing was on the wall from during, uh, even during the beer flu. The inevitability, if the money printer goes, brrr, that just means we are in trouble. And now there's a new war brewing. So who knows how much money is going to be dedicated to supporting one side of that. All very interesting to note, guys. Also, I happen to see this from 24 hours awake here on Twitter. Another XRP glitch, guys, $22.54. I saw this yesterday, but I was just, uh, you know, so overwhelmed with information that I thought I'd wait on it. Bring it to you guys today, and I'm kind of happy I did, considering I also happen to see this at the top of the video, the fact that Coinbase is unavailable for payment. So, I mean, XRP obviously not trading at $22.54, but the fact is this glitch is happening on Coinbase. So why is it only XRP that we see glitching? Am I wrong? Is it other cryptocurrencies, guys? Because quite frankly, it seems to me XRP is the only one that seems to be quote unquote having problems, whether that is a back end restructuring 
or what? I'm still at a loss here for an explanation. What I do know though, market is depressed right now. I'm still accumulating. You can follow me on Patreon, guys, patreon.com slash working money channel if you want to see what I'm trading this particular bull run. Out of the box coins this time, guys. I'm looking to make big money. That's just my opinion, though. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.